I'm HBK Boom, and this is a live interview at Uptown Studios. Who am I? Uh, the GOAT, legend in my city, you feel me? HBK Boom, from Saginaw, small city, little. Like, everybody know everybody, you feel me? Yeah, that's me. My story, what's my story and how do I respond to that? Um, what's the knife but that got a lot of blades on it? Swiss Army knife, that's me, you feel me? Like, do everything, great at everything, not really aiming to be mediocre or normal and nothing I do. Grind it from the bottom, motherfucker be forgetting that part. Like, I was a lame in seventh grade, you feel me? Like. <laughs> And everything just changed fast, so yeah, just jack of all trades, Mr. Do It All, that'll be me. Started from the bottom. How did I get my name? HBK Boom. HBK part came from wrestling. I used to watch wrestling a lot when I was a kid. Boom, boom. Oh, my mom said I used to fall in front of the TV all the time when a certain song came on. It was called Boom Like a Nigger Man or something like that. I don't know. I know the song, though I can find it. And the HBK part really came because I made a Twitter and I couldn't just put at boom. So I put HBK on there and it just stuck. Saginaw. Saginaw is, I always tell people, Saginaw is internally destructive. They, we hinder ourselves in ways, you feel me? But it's a lot of talent. Like, it's a lot of great people that came out of Saginaw that's still in Saginaw. So, like, yeah. Entirely destructive city, but it's turned though. Like we have fun, we know how to party, we drip, we be fresh. You feel me? Like just like any other city in Michigan, for real, it's just small, and we hate ourselves. Believe it or not, so I got people hate things up, bro. Like what I'm, what am I known for in my city? Rapping, hooping, fucking niggas hoes, making beats. Shit, my name always been clean. You can never, nobody ever be able to say I did no fucked up shit. My money wasn't right. I wasn't living right. You feel me? My name 100% clean where I'm from. Really in Michigan at this point. So shit, yeah. Do I remember my first song? I definitely remember my first song. I recorded at Scotty Rob Studio. If you see this, you know who you is. What? I think... I remember my some of my first songs type shit. Like I remember like Polo Down on the SoundCloud. <laughs> What's the oldest one we'd be able to find? On the SoundCloud tip? Polo Down. <laughs> I swear to God. Fire though on the ass tip. Fire is ass on. People oh that Polo Down, that shit ass, gang. What year? <laughs> what Polo Down came up? Like 012, 013, 014, oh, something okay. like that. I started rapping when I was 13. Yeah, I was Not like, like, it was like, from the jump. You feel me? Like, older niggas, like, oh, this little nigga hard. You feel me? Like, from the jump, 13 years old. Polo Down. That shit's so ass, though. What's my favorite song that I've made? It depends. Because, like, Toot That Ass Up, I done made a lot of money off that song. I done seen a lot of ass off that song. For real, have I ever had any rap beef? <laughs> so it's funny because I kind of came up off rap beefing, right? So like I was in a little group, we was FMGB, and we was beefing with some guys named TDG, and we used to just like go back and forth and shit. Like that's how Saginaw rap really started, this era of Saginaw rap. It was FMGB versus TDG, and it was squad versus gang. And if I'm lying, you can comment and tell me I'm lying, because I'm not. That's how this shit started. Them two groups was beefing, and that's when niggas was born type shit. Like, HBK Boom, Wani Dang, nigga named Mando used to rap for Squad, BC Fame, um, Scoop. Them the five main people off the top of my head that was like heavy hitters at the time. And that's how this shit started. Niggas was beefing, niggas, niggas died over that shit, bro. Ass whooping, I got jumped a couple times fucking with that shit. I beat a lot of niggas' ass though. But I facts got jumped a couple times fucking with that shit. So yeah, definitely had rap me. <laughs> what was my last diss song?
probably facts too. You can look that bitch up. I had a fade when that shit came out. A lot of people don't know this one's gonna be a good interview. A lot of my newer fans don't know this version of me. But if you go listen to facts too, that I I all that shit, that's what that shit popped off at. You feel me? So facts too probably my last this song. That was just name dropping. But nowadays niggas sneak this. Niggas are like talk about a whole situation and won't say nobody's name, but you would know what they talking about. You feel me? So, facts too. Would I ever rap battle? Hell no. Nah. My style is not rap battle, so I'm not gonna do it. Like, you gotta really be on that tip in your man. I ain't. That ain't me, bro. Like, I'm not doing that shit. But it's niggas that's hard with that shit, though. But I'm not doing it. Who is my favorite producer? Probably nostalgically, Zaytoven. Cause that's where I really learn how to use and make beats. On the home team tip, Fresh Rich. That's my brother. We started together for real. Shit, I make beats. I'm probably my favorite producer right now. I love my beats. How much distribution should the producer get? Depends on the artist, depends on what y'all talked about. But realistically, 15% ain't bad on a song that's streaming. Especially if you got motion as a producer. Say you got 100 songs at 15%, you probably pulling something in off that. You feel me? So, I don't know, that's been a touchy subject lately. And I'm an artist and a producer, so it's like I understand both ends of the fence. So, I pay the producers, and artists pay me, so. Whatever y'all come up with, I'm speaking from both ends. Y'all just gotta talk about it. If it's that serious, you feel me? Or just pay the guy right, at least that bitch. What's the secret sauce to good music? Authenticity. Being yourself on that bitch. That's how the hardest shit come out. And you can't really care what nobody think about your shit. Because if you hard, then you hard. And somebody fucking with you. So just being real and being you. Then, like, yeah. Stop copying niggas' styles and shit. Like, you can blend with a nigga with your style. You feel me? So, yeah, being authentic. That's everybody that's hard to me sound like they self. They don't sound like this person. don't sound like that person that I fuck with. You feel me? He sound like him, he sound like him, I fuck with that shit. Even women rappers, female rappers. If I add it up, how much do I think I spent on rap? I don't know, a lot. 50, at least 50,000 plus in my head. Had to, had to like count the wardrobe, all that shit, because I'd be fresh as fuck. So yeah, like, chill out. <laughs> he talking about real. real shit, like add it all up, at least 50. I started rapping when I was 13 type shit. 13. But I always been an in-house ass nigga though. Like I ain't never, we didn't, we shoot our own video, we make our own beats, we record ourselves, you feel me? So we real So you were recording me. yourself at 13 type shit? Damn near, we was teaching Close. each other, me and Rich, me and yeah. Rich, we was teaching, we was recording each other, or watching, I did a lot of shadowing early, so I learned a lot just watching. Like I can just watch and learn. How often do I pre-write out my songs? It depends how I'm feeling at the time. Like, if a beat come on and I just feel the words, I just get on that bitch. But, like, if a beat come on and I'm in a booth and I know I'm finna go, and I remember I know I'm gonna get on that one, then I just, you feel me, write it down what I say if I say some hard ass shit. Like, I did that with that R. Kelly shit I made. I was playing the beat and I knew what I wanted to say, so I just read it down real quick. But I really be, I've been freestyling for the last couple, for real. What's my biggest goal in pursuing music? Getting filthy fucking rich dude money. Having fun with it though. No Illuminati, I'm scared of them. What's the most I will ever pay for a feature and who would it be? Fuck. Damn. Damn. Future? I get I'll pay future. I pay Drake too. I'm paying niggas though. They ain't getting whatever they you want. Say a figure, you got how much? A million. They worth it. It didn't come back. That shit gonna put you on for life doing a feature with one of them top tier rappers, you feel me? I'm on for life off that. So that's a big investment I'm gonna make. Especially if they really rocking with it, promoting it, we rocking out. If you around somebody of that stature, you doing something. When I make it big, how do I plan to help Saginaw? Uh, just rebuild the community mental. That's where it started at. Like, you can't really put no money into nothing that don't know how to use the money. So, like, just putting the younger kids into my mind state because they're going to be the ones holding it down. You feel me? Like, 
And investing, of course, building the community back up, building shit, giving it back. The usual. But it's a mental thing. I don't think a lot of people know that about their city. Because Michigan music needs Detroit support. That is touchy. But in a way, yeah, that's the hotbed. Detroit, Flint. I'm putting on for Saginaw. You feel me? But like, Detroit always got the biggest artists. I don't know. That's hard. I, I don't really want to say like you need somebody, but that's the funnel for real. That's the hotbed. That's where the, all the action go down at. That's where all the hoes at. The D. Should my girl be paying half rent? Shit. Damn, I wish they asked me that. <laughs> Man, fuck that shit. Hell yeah. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> fuck they talking about. Yeah, because look, bro, this is my thing, bro. We not married, you feel me? A bitch can up on you. A bitch can go fuck, you feel me? Like, shit don't pay out. Why would I be paying all the rent for this bitch and she just fucking off, you feel me? A bitch quit to, you feel me? Niggas be acting like, I ain't gonna do this bitch acting like. Do I want to get married one day? Yes, but like, it's bad out here. These hoes is fucking, it's bad. Like, I don't know, man. I think this generation gonna be like married right before they die and shit. Like 60. <laughs> I swear to God. Cause they, everybody fucking, like it's open world, it's open out here. Motherfuckers not gonna be getting married, like, no. I don't see it, too. Like, I'm just gotta sit down to it. What was my favorite card game growing up? Probably Uno, because I could never figure out none of that other shit. You just don't, you don't play cards? You don't fuck with no, cards? No, I don't even like gambling, because I don't like losing. I, I could figure out Uno. That's just one, two, three, four different colors and shit. What do I have to say to my biggest op? Catch up, bitch. Ops come weird now, like, Niggas would be like, not liking you for no reason and shit. Like, yeah, bro, you fucked with my girl in 014. I'll never fuck with your music, gang. Like, come on, bro. Who's my biggest rap idol? Lil Wayne probably was like the reason niggas started rapping on the No Ceilings tip. So probably Lil Wayne. No Ceilings, my first tape was called No More Favors because of No Ceilings. And I went off all remix beats because he did all remix beats. How would I respond if Lil Wayne said my music was ass? I wouldn't give a fuck because Lil Wayne listened to my music. You feel me? So if he say that publicly, somebody going to, hmm, let me go see if this shit ass for real. I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't fire on Lil Wayne or nothing. Them niggas be having, them niggas been and abducted me or some crazy shit. But for real, bro. Shit, do I have anything to say to my fans? I love y'all. Let's keep growing. You feel me? We doing us, you feel me? We a team. You be hating, you still a fan. So I appreciate you too. You still streaming that shit, you still watching us.